there any um, like best practice uh, model for the fund where you had to talk about versions of these different products that may be if you got this today and you're going to have a copy of something, maybe it's a different version than mm -hmm. at the time that something was developed. Right. Well, the simple answer is that yes, there is. And the complicated answer is that very little of it's public. And the reason for that is most of the people that have developed those solutions are selling them. They're selling the solution, they're selling consulting, installing it for you. Um, and so they're not terribly interested in publicizing, here's how I do what I do to make money. You can go do it too. Um, it is getting there though quite quickly. Um, I mentioned the, for lack of a better way to say it, recipes for OpenSUR. It's very easy once you have installed OpenSUR, well I won't say very easy because the documentation is kind of obtuse, but if you get involved in the community of OpenSUR users, it's very easy to say, hey, what I need to do is I have this cluster of Astro servers sitting behind and I need to load balance incoming requests and people will say, yep, here's exactly how you do it. So at least small components of the solution, there are well-documented ways of doing them. I have not yet seen any website or book, although a book would probably be kind of wasteful since it'd be obsolete so fast, um, that says, all right, well, if this is your goal, you want to build an enterprise network to service 5,000 users, start here, follow these 86 steps, and end here, and you will be done. Um, I haven't seen anything like that, no. So. Yes. Yep. Yes, sir. Can you guys speak a little bit about the configuration of cluster technology and provisioning of redundancy and things like that, specifically what GPB is, the front end, and how that gets propagated? And I know it's not asked for sure. Sure. Component like open server and you know how do you deal with that issue? That is probably the biggest area that that is not mature in all of this today is that the the tools are there to do the work but telling them how to do the work and making sure that that information gets distributed across the cluster is where most of the magic happens I guess um, in actually getting the job done um, and some of that is because because of the fact that they are all different tools so they use different methods of being configured in different ways of getting told what to get done um, and in, in the cases of things like you mentioned, free PBX, which is an interface that is used to configure asterisk to be a small PBX, um, there aren't really any commonly available front ends for asterisk that can be used to at, can manage a cluster of asterisk servers. They're all focused around managing one server to do a specific task. Um, there are some that are out there, but again, they are commercial products that are not available for free or even are open source in many cases. Um, so where the focus is going though, and certainly the where our development focus is going, is on coming up with ways to make sure that you can store that configuration and provisioning information in any means you want to. So for example, most current versions of Asterisk have the ability to read uh, provisioning information from an LDAP database. So if you were integrating this with a six Microsoft network, for example, where you've got 100,000 users already in Active Directory and you don't want to have to redefine all the users in the phone system, it's possible now to say, this is what I want to use as my back end. Um, and that's also becoming useful in carrier environments where they already have a database of all of their customers and they're adding voice services on top of, say, dial-up internet services. So they've already got all the users defined and they want to do those things. So. It's where most of the focus is happening right now. Again, because the products already do voice switching and voicemail and conferencing and everything else, now it's, it goes back to the question you asked of how do you design everything that sits on top of that to make sure that everything works together. So, so the people that do the large scale clustering right now that they do the front end and it's or something like that? Um, there's a large variety of ways that they're done. Uh, I think the most common scenario is that the, the provisioning information, the description of what the system is supposed to do, is stored in some sort of database, um, managed by a web front end usually, 
and then there are back-end processes that pull the data out of that database and reformulate it into what the components need. So maybe OpenSUR and Asterisk both have to know about all of your users, for example. So they'll have a tool that reads the user information on the database and formats it into what Asterisk needs to see and another one that formats it into what OpenSUR needs to see. Um, so yeah, that's, I won't say it's manual because that's not really the tr I mean, they're not logging into each box and making the changes on the boxes, but there's still a great deal of moving the data around to accomplish the goal. So, okay, anybody else? Yes? <laughs> um, that I can talk about. <laughs> that's the really that's the really difficult part. Um, I think actually the work that's being done to make asterisk servers aware of each other, this event management and other things like that, is really going to lead to some really cool stuff. Um, one of the things that has not ever been possible before with asterisk is to have a call queue shared amongst multiple asterisk servers because there's just not there's not enough information sharing between the servers to know when a queue agent is on the phone or not on the phone or where they just hung up and they need 30 seconds to finish wrapping up the call and all that kind of stuff none of that's ever been communicatable between asterisk servers before but the tools that are being worked on right now by one of our developers um, will make that sort of thing possible um, what that will also result in is, I'm sure you're all aware, people are obviously presence and instant messaging are a big area of, big topic of this conversation right now. And we have the ability to communicate presence out of the asterisk system. So for example, you can connect an asterisk server to your Jabber network and then on to any other instant messaging protocol that you like. And if someone's on the phone, see that their instant messenger status now changes to busy because they're on the phone if that's what they should choose to do. But again, that's not shareable amongst multiple asterisk servers yet. So if your load has reached the point where you can't put all 5,000 of your users on one asterisk server and yet you still want this, today that's not possible without an enormous amount of effort. But I suspect that within the next six months or so, we should have the ability to make that just happen so that now your group of servers just acts as one unit, at least to the outside world. Internally, you have some work to do, but to the outside world, it just becomes one big unit. So. Yes, sir. Um, it, well, it would be almost by default because that is device state presence already that's being used to implement that. So effectively, that would be possible, yes. Yep. All right, I think we are out of time. Yeah, we are. Okay, okay. thank you very much.